Live from Orlando, Florida, it's theCUBE, covering Pentaho World 2017. Brought to you by Hitachi Ventara. Welcome back to theCUBE's live coverage of Pentaho World, brought to you, of course, by Hitachi Ventara. I am your host, Rebecca Knight, along with my co-host, James Kobilis. We are joined by Stefano Celati. He is a Pentaho Solutions Consultant at Binova. Thanks so much for coming on theCUBE, Stefano. Thank you for having me. So, so I, I should say congratulations are in order because you are here to, to accept the Pentaho Excellence Award on for the ROI category on behalf of Lazio Crea. Yeah. Tell us about the award. Yes, I, as I was saying, I'm really proud of this award because it is something that is related to public administration savings, which is a good thing, first of all, for me as a citizen, let's say. Uh, this project is about healthcare spendings. Uh, in Italy, the, the National Healthcare Services uh, allows the drugstore to sell uh, medicines to total partial reimbursement by NHS itself. And they also have the possibility to, the, to replace the medicine with a generic drug, which normally costs less to the people and also to the health service itself. So a couple of years ago, uh, the Regione Lazio, which is the political area to which Rome belongs, just to, just to explain, uh, launched a new project to monitor, analyze, and uh, inspect the spending flow in drugs. So we partnered with uh, Lazio Crea to create a business analytics platform based on Pentaho, obviously, and which collects all the data coming from the prescriptions and store it in a, an analytical database that is vertical and uses PDI ETL tools to, to store this data. That's per Pentaho data integration. Yes, yes, PDI is Pentaho data integration, good point. <laughs> and after that, we present the data in terms of reporting, analysis, dashboards, to all the people that are interested in this data. So. We talk about region managers, we talk about auditors, and also to local district users, which are in charge of managing the expenditure for, for drugs. Uh, the outcome of this project was really impressive because uh, we had uh, an expenditure fell by 3.6%, which in a region where we have more than 200 million prescription every year means 34 million euros in a year. Wow. So it was really huge result. Uh, we were very happy about that. And it was so simple because simply monitoring better the expenditures, monitoring how they uh, deliver the drugs, uh, how, what kind of medicine they prescribe, uh, and targeting what pharmacies uh, sell to, to the end user just gave these impressive results. And this year they are uh, forecasting for 41 million euros in savings more. Mm -hmm. So it's a huge result, it's uh, something that is uh, really for us really a good result. So here in the US, I mean we have, we have problems very similar to what you just described in Italy. Mm -hmm. um, and just putting the transparency around the data is, would be a huge revelation for, for the United States too. How big a departure was it in Italy? Well, it was a really uh, a big problem to start because we, they didn't have any system to collect all this data. So they had to set up everything from scratch, let's say, just by acquiring the, the paper where the, <laughs> the physician writes the recipe. So it was not, not that easy to, to, to build it from scratch. But after that, the region added, has had the opportunity to to monitor this data and also to publish this data which is something that in Italy is uh, really relevant in this moment we because we are talking about open government we are talking about open data and so again the result was really impressive do you see any follow-on opportunities to use this data for other purposes other than the initial application? Yes, we already uh, experienced a different usage of this data because during the last major earthquake we have in 2016 in, in, this, in this area, those guys from Lazio Crea were able to produce 
a list of the most needed drugs in that area hmm. just in a couple of hours, just by using the ETL and setting up this list that it, uh, somehow help the, the first aid units in giving the right assistance on time. Hmm. And next steps will be about hyperprescriptions because we want to monitor if there are any doctors that prescribe drugs that are not really necessary. And also okay. we will also try to move our uh, inspection also to hospitals because uh, when, you, when you do a surgery, you get medicine, you get uh, a lot of uh, uh, assistance in the hospital. So we want also to monitor that kind of the aspect, which is again in charge of the health system. Mm. To make sure that the right medicines are being distributed to the right yes. regions at the right time for yes, the intent, yes. the, the likely. This, this could also lead to something that is a correlation analysis, meaning wh what is your, your pain and what are you assuming? So that they can have an historical data they can use to, to, to prescribe better uh, medicines. But, but wait, the, the anecdote he was sharing about the earthquake too is really compelling too. If you think about a public, if you think about a public health crisis, an outbreak of some sort, yes. to be able to get drugs quickly to those in need, it's really astonishing. Again, th this morning we were talking about data lake. This is a sort of data lake. Uh, we found several ways to use this, that data, to fish them back from the data, let's say, from the lake. Uh, and it's, it's really impressive what, what you can do if you have the right information and you, you know how to use it. How do you see the market developing I in over the next year, next five years? Yes. The problem in Italy is that uh, the market is not so responsive to innovation like others, let's say US or UK in Europe. So for this reason, my company Binova set up uh, an annual event which is called Big Data Tech. And the purpose of this event is to spread the knowledge about big data systems, uh, products, uh, architecture and so on, which helps uh, companies in uh, knowing better what they can do with these platforms. So in the next months, we see a lot of opportunities, generically speaking, in data mining field. We start talking about predictive analysis, we start talking about smart cities and other stuff like that. So again, we will need maybe to enter in a new phase of, uh, let's say, evangelization because uh, companies like Binova and others that uh, operate in this, in this field of business analytics need to put to general knowledge what other innovative companies are doing. So in the next months, we will for sure move to new architectures, new technology, and we, have, we will have to support all the companies with this kind of stuff. In terms of the new technology you're moving to, is there a role for the Internet of Things, both in your plans and in really in, in terms of the Italian market? What, what sort of potential applications are there for IoT, related perhaps to the use of, of, of it with health data going yes, forward yes. in Italy? Yes, also for healthcare, but uh, in, in Italy, the IoT uh, te team is a parallel line that is growing thanks to a government, governmental uh, initiative which is called Industry 4.0, mm -hmm. which encourages the usage of interconnected machines uh, connected to the internet, so the classical approach of the IoT uh, field. So with this new uh, approach uh, and the government sustain, we believe that the IoT will have a, a big improvement in the next years. Again, we're talking about Italy, so we are not so fast in growing. <laughs> but again, we are starting to talk about smart cities for energy saving, uh, sustainable, uh, uh, um, sustainable uh, energy and uh, other stuff in which the IoT play, plays a key role. So as far as our business is concerned, that is business analytics, so yeah. on top of that, we see a lot of opportunities coming from predictive analysis, uh, which means uh, to, to prevent the maintenance of a machine, for example, or to use virtual reality to simulate the laboratory tests and other stuff. So with this, 
uh, with these opportunities, for sure, the usage of data mining tools such as Weka, when we're talking about Pentaho solutions, could be a great advantage because you will, you will uh, apply uh, the, the knowledge to your data. So you, you, will, you will not only analyze the data, but you will also extract some sort of knowledge from the data which can help companies. Of course, Italy is where the Renaissance began, and this sounds like yeah. a, right. a Renaissance use of analytics right. yes. to help the Italian people and the Italian economy conti to continue to grow and innovate. Yes, uh, yes. Thank so you I want to see not a data lake, a data coliseum. That's yes, what, that's, that's, that that's should be on your I want your a data list. gallery with lots of data masterpieces <laughs> hanging on the walls all around Italy. <laughs> right, exactly. You'll be, the, you'll be the new Leonardo and Michelangelo. Oh, right. I guess Stefano so. Celati, Thanks. I love it, great. <laughs> well, thank you so much for coming on theCUBE. <laughs> thank you for having me. I'm Rebecca Knight for Jim Kobielus. We will have more from Pentaho World just after this.